Hi, it's uh, Q2 from All The Flavors here. This is the first of a number of sort of getting started videos, simple ways that I can show you mixing one-on-one, -on -one, how you can get started in this, or at least just to show it what my process is like in doing simple mixing. Today, we're gonna do two things. The first is um, we're gonna make some unflavored bass. Talk a little about what what that's useful for, and then we're also going to do some single flavor mixing, sort of production line style. We're going to do a bunch of them at once, and that's the reason why I'm making the the unflavored bass. Uh, it's useful for a lot of different things. The first one is when when you're kind of burnt out, when no flavors are working for you, when you just need a break. Having some unflavored bass on hand isn't a bad thing at all. It helps you refresh your refresh your palate and uh, and not waste flavors when when you just not getting anything out of it. Um, in addition, it's useful for doing fast mixes. Um, you can buy unflavored bases from various suppliers. One of the things that I don't like about buying suppliers is usually wind up with 3%, 6%, uh, or three milligram per milliliter, six milligram per milliliter. Um, when you mix those down, you actually wind up a little lower than you, you actually purchase it at. So if you buy a 3%, you wind up at 2.6% after you're done mixing, something like that. Uh, by mixing your own pre-flavored base, I can mix these at 4%, and it'll actually allow me to then produce a quick mix using a pre-flavored base at the milligram per milliliter that I want it at. Um, I'm going to be mixing inside of, of this container. This is actually my, my standard sort of mixing container. And uh, it, it, it's, it's big. It's bigger than most mixes that I make, and it's far more than we're going to use today. But the advantage is that it actually allows me to have a lot of space in it for, mix, for, for stirring or for shaking. Um, the more headspace you've got, really, the better shake you're going to get. And shaking your mixes, shaking your ingredients, shaking everything is very important when you're doing mixing. I'm um, going to go through the tools that I've got today. And uh, this is a, a cheap scale. I think it's gonna, you can hear my dog saying hello there. This is kind of a cheap scale. Uh, this isn't my 501. Um, I'll probably include a link below. Probably all the links that I include, uh, all the tools that I use, I'll have links for them. Probably, I get most of my things from Amazon and I'll probably have them down below with, uh, with affiliate links in place. So if you wanna support me, go ahead and use those. If not, you probably know how to edit an affiliate link and take that portion off. Um, there's this scale, which I think I got off of eBay, but I'm sure it's available on Amazon uh, very cheaply. Uh, the 501 doesn't really fit here. I'm kind of working in a really tight space to get all this video in, in one place, and I'll be working to improve that over time, but so this is what we've got today. Um, I've got VG and PG. I keep them in these containers. Um, they're the most convenient way to use it for me. Uh, this container opens easily, so if I need a lot of VG at once, I can just pour it right out of the bottle. Um, I've got my nicotine. I keep it uh, in this kind of container. Um, I like to squeeze it. I'll keep it in here for some time, and that's kind of uh, really convenient for me. A lot of people are concerned that their nicotine is going to go bad. Um, that's not my experience. Basically, as long as you keep it away from air and away from light, and away from extreme heat, room temperature isn't hurting you much at all. Uh, it's mostly about, about controlling that oxidation level, and as long as you're keeping the oxygen out of it, you're pretty much good to go. Um, reducing the, the head space in it is a good idea, so uh, keep it as full as you can. When this starts getting down to halfway, I'll move it to a smaller bottle. Um, I've always got a notepad on hand. So something to take notes with. Stuff happens uh, when you're doing this process, and it may not, it may not come out the way that that the the batch notes uh, tell it to be, or the way the mix tells it to be. So this makes me allows me to remember things um, and make notes as a, as I'm in the process. Sometimes you change stuff at the last minute, and you just want to make a note of that someplace. Um, I've always got these huck towels around. Um, usually a stack of them on my desk. Uh, it's the best way to to be prepared for mixes. This is kind of my main desk that I've got my computer and everything else on. So uh, spill containment is an important thing. This tray, uh, I'll link to this too. It's just like a cafeteria tray. It's like the kind of thing that you would uh, use in a lunch counter or something. 
But what it allows me to do is prevent cross-contamination between the desk and uh, the stuff that's going to be going into my lungs, you know? So uh, it's about keeping it as clean as possible. This tray's been recently washed, so, so uh, just before this, this uh, recording started. And also the desk has been cleaned off and everything else. We want to keep things as clean as possible. Um, we're not going to be sterile in this environment, but we are going to be as clean as possible and this helps that process. It also contains any spills so that if I do knock over my VG or my PG, it doesn't run across the desk. It just gets contained right here and mistakes do happen. This scale has been covered in strawberry ripe. It's been covered in um, sugar cookie. It's been covered in a lot of things. Let's see, uh, I've always got a knife on hand. This Swiss army knife goes a long way. Um, it's just good to have it here and ready to go just for whatever you might encounter during this process. Um, mixing is fairly simple, but when something goes wrong, you, you want to have the, the, the right on hand ready to clean things up and contain spills, contain messes, open containers. You want all of that just right on standby right there during the emergency. Uh, to go along with that, I've also got this little bowl and um, a funnel. Uh, I don't use these funnels very often, but when you do make a mistake, being able to transfer between bottles cleanly, it matters. So this, these have all been recently cleaned so I can use them for, uh, for immediate transfer for anything I might have to. These little bowls, um, yeah, I'll probably have links to all of these tools down below. So uh, if you wanna pick them up, you can see where I got them, but surely you can find something similar anywhere. Um, over here, I've got a whole stack of, of these, uh, these are, it actually says Derringer on it. These are Derringer clones. Uh, I got these from Fast Tech and I keep a stack of these around, um, all set to go with a clean wick inside of them, uh, with a simple coil ready for, you can't see that, sorry. Um, let me actually switch camera views. So you can see that close up. Um, so I keep these derringers ready to go pretty much all the time, uh, clean, and you can do quick quick flavor testing on them right away. Um, I set it up with a, with a single coil, so uh, it's simple. I can run some unflavored base through it, and it's ready for testing just about anything, anytime. So let's actually get started with, with making up this uh, unflavored base nudged that camera a little bit still learning how this works and I'm on all the flavors right now and uh, this is an unflavored base recipe that I made uh, basically I just went through and I made a new recipe and didn't put any ingredients in it at all and then hit mix and uh, this is I'm mixing this at 4% I generally vape at 3% but by making this at 4%, it gives me that headspace that I might need in order to later on um, mix this with something else down to, to uh, 3%. Uh, I don't want to bury you in math right now. <laughs> if you want to do the, uh, the, the math, that, that actually gives you enough space that you can mix up to 20% uh, flavoring with this and still produce a 3% um, with a little additional VG. So, Let's get going. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with all the flavors, this is the mixing page. And the mixing page of all the flavors lets you uh, put in your your strength uh, grams per liter or milligrams per milliliter of nicotine. I always buy 100 mil and then mix down to 48 mil, uh, milligram per milliliter. Um, I do it at 50-50, so it's half VG, half PG. That's just the way that I do it. Um, I don't know of anyone else that does it this way, but I find it's very convenient and lets me do fairly high VG without having to have, uh, without having to mix, uh, shake the heck out of this because it's, it's pretty viscous with 50% PG. I wanna mention that I've always got a cup of, coffee, a cup of black coffee around. Um, not only do I always have one because I like coffee, but I also keep one around while I'm mixing and tasting single flavors because it's a great palate reset. In addition, always have lots of water. 
Um, hydration is important for flavoring, uh, for tasting. Um, it's probably the most important thing to avoid vapor's tongue. Probably the most important thing to make sure that you're getting a true, the true sense of the flavors that you're testing. Um, back to the calculator, you can see that um, we're going to need basically just our Nick base, our PG, and our VG. So I'm going to bring the calculator here. I bring the, the, the scale here in the middle so that everyone can see it. Uh, turn that on. Turn it on. Turn it on. On, sorry, I'm looking off to the side here. I usually have it right in front of me. Um, hit tear just to ensure that it's there. I'm gonna put the bottle on it and tear the bottle out. So, uh, just so we know that's about 11 to 11 and a half um, grams. That bottle, we'll test that later just to make sure that I will remember that number for later so we can test the weight of the, the entire mixture. And, um, Let's go to our first one. First one is going to be our uh, our first item is going to be this Nick base, and we're going to need 8.57 grams of Nick base. So uh, trying to find a way to do this so that you can actually see the scale. I've already shaken this, um, shook the heck out of it before this started. That's important. Um, nick base uh, nicotine can actually settle invisibly inside the bottle in layers and you wind up with what are called hot spots and those hot spots being that when you mix in the future or when I mix here uh, I'll wind up with varying or possibly random amounts of nicotine um, that's not something that you want so let me go to 8.5 We're going to go for 8.56 and one drop to take us to 8. Little over, not enough to measure. This scale is probably, uh, the margin of error on it is probably at least that high. So uh, I'm going to tear that out and always check off whatever you add uh, just to ensure that you don't come back to it later especially in a sort of a, uh, a scattered and disarray that you're seeing here. This allows me to keep track of what I'm doing. When I'm doing a, a more complicated mix, I'll lay each one of my flavors out uh, sort of in a row here so I can I can make sure do a double check to make sure that I've, I've been through them all and I haven't done them twice. Um, so next we're gonna do our PG. And PG, we need 23.9 grams of that. So do it from this side so, so that everyone can see it. PG is very viscous. It runs pretty much like water. So you've got to be careful to not spill it everywhere. And we're looking for 23.9. I don't hold the VG directly straight up and down. Um, it flows too much that way. And uh, although it goes a little slower, holding an angle like this, you actually wind up avoiding a lot of uh, mistakes. So we're at 20, 20, coming up on 22, and we want 23.9 here. So 23.5, 23.9. And a tiny bit over, no one's going to notice the difference. Um, I'm looking at a very strange angle here, so I'll improve that in, in future videos. It's uh, it's just tough to get it just the way I want it. So I'm going to tear that one out again. Now it's time for our VG, and I'm actually going to pour the VG largely because it's 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 very slow flowing through this tip. It's good for for uh, mixes, but not so great for here what I'm making base and using it in bulk. So, uh, tear it out again, and we're going for 74.95, essentially 75. Coming up 
past 50, 60, 74 point 75. There we go. Now I'm going to pop this tip on. Make sure I turn off my scale. And then I'm going to shake the heck out of this right away. And I'm also going to grab one of my towels and clean up. You can see a little of that that PG went wild. Just about the time that I was talking about how you can hold it at an angle. Don't make a mess. That's when I made a mess. So, you can see plenty of headspace in that bottle. Uh, therefore, I can get plenty of air in it. Don't worry about the oxygen that's going into it right now. That's not going to cause much, much, much oxidization and it's not going to make much of a difference. Um, it does serve as an indicator that you are actually mixing this, which is uh, very good to know. Um, show it there. No, show it here. So you can see uh, air bubbles are forming inside of it. You can see that it's very homogenized, very mixed up. There are no layers in it. I'm going to clean off my scale. Clean off the place that the bottle was sitting. And now we have 4%, 4, sorry, 4 milligram per milliliter uh, Nick base. Ready to use in single flavor testing. Ready to use straight in our atomizer. If uh, it'll be 4%, not 3%. Uh, not a big difference for me. If it is for you, then um, you can always mix it at 3%, but that limits your use later for when you want to actually use it in single flavor testing. So uh, I usually keep some 3% around as well. I'm out at the moment, but uh, maybe we'll make some later just to have it on hand. But this will be for single flavor testing. Now I'll show that we were aiming for 90 mils. That's what we set the calculator to. And we came right to that 90 mil mark. If you can see it there. So that looks accurate. Um, in addition, if we look at, just a quick math on the the total, we know that this is a, a, about 11 and a half grams when we started. And so we've got uh, 24 grams of PG, we've got 75 grams of VG, and we've got eight and a, eight and a half grams of Nick base, and turn the scale back on. Check that. And our weight comes out pretty close. Uh, so we're, we're, we're now sure what we've got in this bottle uh, within a certain margin of error. One thing I do want to do right away is make sure I label this. And if I don't have a label on hand, I'm going to put 4% unflavored right on the bottle right away with a Sharpie. Um, I also have some labels on hand so I can do it properly. But the, the important thing is to make sure that, that, that you label this as early as possible so that next time uh, you see this bottle, you know what's in it. Um, it's very easy to think that you're going to know, that you're going to remember that this bottle is unique and you wouldn't make that mistake again. I just put 4% unflavored on that. I use these red labels that already have a bunch of scribbles on them so that they look very, very obvious that this is, uh, this is a base. And although this isn't uh, dangerously high nicotine, it is essentially a nicotine base. Um, there are many times that I've come back and thought that I'm going to remember what's in a bottle and then I discover it an hour later, a week later, a month later, and I have absolutely no idea what's in the bottle and uh, I have to toss it because it's just not safe to, to guess what's in these things. Um, I'm going to set up now for the single flavor mixing and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, um, I'm set up now for the single flavor testing and I'm going to show you a little bit here how I've got this this guy set up. Um, how do I make it come on focus? You okay. Uh, 
Well, it's a single flavor coil, a uh, single, uh, a single coil, and there we go. It won't stay. Well, it's a single coil, uh, widely wrapped, widely spaced, with just a little bit of cotton in it. Not a lot. This is intended to be torn down and then taken apart and reused. Uh, I set up the the single flavor, the single coil mode, like that. Make sure that the air is blowing directly onto the coil. And then I do my testing with uh, with it full, full on, all the way open. And uh, I'm gonna put some of this unflavored we just made right into the top. Because this is a clean piece of cotton, I use cotton bacon. Uh, I imagine everyone knows cotton bacon. That's the package. Cotton bacon. Uh, works pretty good for me. Some people think it's wasteful, but uh, a, a bag of it lasts me quite a while. And I've got this set at, this is my Segele 213. I've got it just at 15 watts right now. Uh, not temperature control, power mode. And yeah, the unflavored base is just essentially neutral. There's no real flavor to it at all. Um, what if I overfilled that a little bit? Uh, it's perfectly acceptable. It's not a bad flavor. There's almost no flavor to it at all. It's a little bit sweet. Um, Skittles Ninja actually uh, from DIY or Die. He said recently, I think it was him, he said he can't stand the flavor of VG. But uh, I don't taste anything at all. So... Your mileage might vary. But what using unflavored on a fresh coil, a uh, fresh uh, wick does allow you to do is to get rid of all that. Um, you know when the wick is 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 worked in. Uh, a wick always tastes different when it's extremely new versus when it's been used one or two times. So over here on the board, I've got. All of my marshmallows set up. This is going to be a marshmallow single flavor test. Um, this Loran, I don't have much of it. It's the only one I'm going to want using a pipette for here. Uh, these are from uh, ECX, 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 and then Bull flavor here, and uh, Bull City flavors and Bull City flavors. Most of my flavors come from ECX or Bull City. Um, Gremlin is another great source for them if you're in the US. Um, I will go to Wizard if they have something that no one else has, but I really enjoy having things in these squeeze factors and uh, Wizard comes only in glass, which means I need to use a lot more pipettes and that's just sort of an annoyance. So, getting started, um, you can see our unflavored base is still up here. What I'm going to do is switch over to flavors. And I'm actually going to search for marshmallow. And you can see that all the flavors will highlight all the marshmallows, but also show me at the top which ones I actually have. Um, so these are four, five, these are the six that I have. I'm including TPA Toasted Marshmallow, which is not officially a marshmallow, but we'll see how it compares to the rest. Um, if you look at these numbers, 1.95, 1.61, these are the average uses by other mixers. Uh, 1.45, 1.66, 2.5, 1.41. I could mix all these individually at different uh, at their actual average usage but because these all hover reasonably close to two I'm gonna do all these tests at two percent maybe that's a mistake maybe it isn't let me know below how you feel about the, the the methodology that I'm following here 
but essentially that will allow me to uh, to have an even across the board because they all come up about the same and marshmallows used in a similar way. Um, it might seem ridiculous that I'm doing this in general because everyone thinks of marshmallows in null flavor, but I find that uh, some of these actually do have a lot of flavor to them. They're all uh, they're all different. They're all distinctive, and uh, if you look into the history of marshmallow, marshmallow is actually a fairly complex flavor, or it was at one time. It was actually um, taken from the root of the marshmallow. Uh, it's an actual plant that grows, I think, in the UK, and the plant itself is uh, sort of goopy and uh, has a slime to it when you mash it. And they would mash the, the whole plant, mostly the root, and mix it, whip it with air, and dry it out, and it would become a something that, that, that you might recognize uh, if you're used to what we call marshmallows today. Today, marshmallows are uh, sugar and gelatin and maybe a little vanilla, and they're extruded into a foam and added, uh, they add cornstarch to the outside to keep them sticking together. But, um, so some of these flavors actually sort of follow that model of the, the modern marshmallow. But I think some of these have a, a deeper and more complex flavor that maybe they're aiming for what marshmallows used to be in the past. We'll know more after this test, and that's kind of why I wanted to do it. Um, because we've got the 4% uh, unflavored that we can start with, this can be actually a relatively simple process. I'm going to go in and create a new recipe. Here are all the flavors. And I'm just going to call it Marshmallow Test. I'm going to add one flavor to it. And in this case, I guess it'll be TPA Marshmallow. And I'm going to save that and mix it right now. Oop. Uh, I didn't add anything. We want that at 2%. So we've got our marshmallow test set up, ready to mix. Um, this actually is already at, uh, I want it at 3%. And I'm going to start with a 4%. 70, 30. And so we're going to need about 1.8%. Oh, uh, obviously, we're not making 90 mils of this. We're just going to make 10 per. So we're going to need 0 0.2 uh, of marshmallow, obviously, 2% uh, of 10 mils. And the rest of this, uh, we're just going to use the the uh, we're gonna we're gonna cheat here. We're not gonna follow this the way it it, it, it says to come out. We're just gonna use the point two, and then we'll fill the rest up with our nick base because this isn't a real mix. I don't really need it at seventy thirty. It's gonna come out a little bit lower than seventy thirty. It's gonna come out a little higher than three milligrams per milliliter. That's all acceptable. We're just doing single flavor tests here. These are gonna get sampled a few times and then tossed. So let's get started. Um, I'll start with the with the Loran, mainly because it's kind of a pain in the butt uh, to deal with. Everything has already been shaken, but I'm going to shake it again because it's been sitting for a couple minutes now while I talk. Um, I don't like using pipettes very much. Some people swear by them. It's just not my my thing. Uh, we're looking for 0.2% here, and I'm at a terrible angle. Went almost over there. There we go. Actually a little high. And what I don't like pipettes is you don't have a lot of control. And I'm going to take that pipette and set it aside right now. Good thing I had that bowl handy. And then I'll move this aside so I know I've already done it. And I'm going to take this and take it up to essentially what's going to be 10 mils. Please 
these are 15 mil containers and that's pretty much it now I'm gonna label this I'm just gonna put an M on it so I know it's my marshmallow test and I'll put LA on it we'll label these better later but just want to make sure that that I know what I've already got there so it's mostly repeating that exact same process tear it out container give it a shake this is the uh, the TFA marshmallow three again And that's pretty much the process that we're going to follow all the way across. You want to make sure that I mark this with an M so I know it's my marshmallow test, and I'll put TPA underneath it. So our next one is going to be this FA. Smell them when I open them. find uh, that one's even more over than the previous working in really small numbers uh, especially this quickly and sort of in front of the camera yeah you know it, I'm, I'm going over here I'm not being as careful as I would be if I weren't doing this for for, for the camera and also uh, these are again single flavor tests I don't know if I'm if 2% is the right number I don't know if a little over makes more sense I'm just gonna do a comparison across the board of these and I want some idea what they're like when I want to do more complex testing or get more uh, exacting information I can still do that in a different test and almost there go and that one was the FA FA marshmallow again my M a little FA um, I don't have my toasted marshmallow so I'm just going to skip that one for right now, and I'll come back and do it again later. In fact, I think you've seen enough of these that you know the process. I'm just going to rip through these, and then we'll continue. Thought I'd show quickly uh, how I organize my smaller flavors. This uh, might drive some of you crazy, and I apologize in advance for those. But for anyone else, this is a, this is a fairly, fairly useful way to, to, to organize stuff. I put my small flares in Ziploc baggies. Organized by, oh, I can't see this. Let me switch back. Uh, organized by letter. If I, if the bag has a lot of items in it, um, I'll break them down by vendor inside. So I have a smaller baggie for Capella, smaller baggie for uh, Flavor Art, etc., etc. But in this case, teas. There aren't many of them. I can look right inside from the outside and get my toasted marshmallow. Then I close everything back up again, and it's all sealed. I'm going to shake the heck out of this, just to make sure that it's well homogenized. Well, homogenized. And I'll add it down into the, the lineup down here, and 
switch back to the death shot. Now I'm going to finish these up and we'll get on to the testing. Okay, I've uh, I finished up the rest of these and I'm just popping on the drip tips now. And they all came out about 0.23, which is good. They were all about the same. Uh, little mistake there. Good thing I had sealed them all. You shouldn't do this one-handed, and you shouldn't do it while you're talking to a camera. Um, I cap each one of these. Later on, I'm going to label those with an actual sticker. Uh, this will rub off, especially in the presence of VG or uh, PG. Uh, PG is a pretty good solvent. I'm going to take those right off. But at least I got them labeled now, so I can definitely remember what they are. You can see they all just fell over, and when they did, I would have lost all the information I have about the order they were in. So, these are done. And what I'm going to do is make a point of a heavy shake for each one of them right now to get them homogenizing. And then uh, I'll put them down. I can actually do a bunch of these at once because they're so small. When I put them down, I'll put them in a different section of my work surface just to ensure that uh just to ensure that I know which one's which and then I'll get the one that I dropped off camera. So I'll go down and then I'm gonna set up the actual atomizers. So I've got these all set up now and uh first thing we'll take a look at is the the coloration. You can see that the the cap Capella Marshmallow and the uh, TFA Toasted Marshmallow are both slightly darker than the rest. The rest just sort of look like water. Maybe the TFA Marshmallow has a little bit of color to it, but not much. Um, so that's essentially the starting state is everything is fairly translucent. The TFA and the uh, TFA Toasted and the cap are a little darker. You'd expect that from the TFA uh, toasted, but maybe not from the cap. One thing that I'll note is that I've heard reports that Capella has changed their recipe. They couldn't get their hands on Madagascar vanilla, I think, and so they've changed that. Um, I don't know if it's for the better or for the worse. I have no idea. I'm testing this bottle I've had for some time, and it was quite dark, almost to the point where it looked sort of purple in the bottle. So we'll find out whether that's an old one or a new one. Pretty sure it's an old one. Um, I'm actually gonna take the, the, the Flavor West right now and I'm gonna do the first single flavor test with it. I'm gonna run it straight into the atomizer and give it a second to soak up a little bit because there was a little unflavored still in here. So it'll run for a while before the flavor actually comes out. I can taste it right away. Um, I would say in that lighter one, it's a little vanilla. I can taste vanilla in it. Very light flavor. I'm expecting that from a lot of these. That um, sorry, these lights are very bright. Um, I'm expecting that from a lot of these. That the the flavor is going to be minimal, but I do know some of them have real flavors to them. Uh, I believe Loran has a real flavor to it, and I expect something more from the Flavor West once I run through it a little more. Yeah, there's a real flavor starting to come in now, and I would say it's more complicated than just vanilla. Um... I do think there's a little of that rootiness that I'd be looking for. That may be just complexity from the vanilla note. I'm not entirely sure, but... Yeah, I would say there's more going on there. Um, it does not taste...
It doesn't taste strictly like what I'd think of when I was thinking of marshmallow. But I definitely, I, I agree with the name of the flavor. It's just not, if I were designing a marshmallow flavor, that's not what I would have. Uh, there's a vanilla note there. There's something a little more earthy, I think, to it. Let me set up for the next one. I've upped the wattage a little bit to 25, and I think I'm getting a much truer sense of the nature of this. Um, still in the flavor west now. I've done a palate reset, done some coffee, done some, some water, drink some coffee, drink some water. And um, I think I'm getting a better sense of this now. I still agree with everything I said before. Uh, very light, very unoffensive, but that vanilla note is there. And that slightly more earthy note is there. All in all, um, very nice. I could probably, I could probably vape this directly, and it wouldn't bother me. I'd get bored after a while, but it's quite nice. I'm actually still on the uh, flavor west here, and. Something that I wouldn't have thought of unless I started this process is this reminds me more of a a marshmallow filling, like in um I haven't had moon pie in forever, but that sort of a filling rather than a marshmallow you get out of the bag and then use for s'mores or something like that. I would say this um, this would not be the right marshmallow I would use for um, like a Christ Krispie treat type flavor. I don't think. Maybe it's just the lack of butter that's stopping that. But yeah, I don't think that it would work there. Okay, I'm really going to move on to the next one now. Once you start doing this, uh, it's, it's actually just fun to, to, to really think about a flavor and put it in context and uh, kind of get lost in it. So I've uh, still at 22, uh, 22 watts and I've moved on to the Capella now. I haven't tried it yet, so I've done a palette reset and gotten a little bit of water and waited for the, the vapor in here to clear out a little bit and uh, gave it a shot. little bit of bitterness there. Much lighter flavor, I think. You have much lower. Not, not an offensive bitter, not a bad bitter, but in comparison to the Flavor West, there's less going on here. Uh, this might work as just a, fl uh, a sweetener. This might work uh, well to smooth out another mix. I think that's how people typically use marshmallow in mixes is to um, decrease the strength of a, of, a, of a flavor without decreasing the overall flavor of the mix. Kind of smooth it out a bit, stretch it a bit. Yeah, uh, very, very low flavor in comparison to the Flavor West. Not bad. There is something there. It's definitely more than just the unflavored. It's definitely more than just sweet. And there is, again, that tiny, tiny bit of bitterness there. Um, no problems at all with this. But this is definitely a mixer. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't enjoy this over just unflavored. Moving on to... Uh, the Loran next. Okay, I've got the, the Loran set up here, still at 22. There's a lot more flavor there. Um, almost a floral note. I can really taste the vanilla. I wouldn't say 
cakey, but it's like in that direction. Like there's a real flavor here. Not a, um, not an overpowering one. Not one that I can really put my finger on. Yeah, that one's gonna gonna actually affect the flavor of the mix. Um, it's not it's not cinnamon, it's not spice, but it's got like an undertone there that uh, that seems to have some kind of um, definitely floral. I would say. They might be using a more complex vanilla here, and as a result, it's evoking a whole bunch of other flavors. Uh, I mentioned cinnamon there specifically because it seems like maybe there's a pocket in the flavor formed where you'd expect cinnamon to be. That, um, I mentioned earlier about <clears throat> making Rice Krispie treats. I would not go that direction with this one. This would be good. Um, I mentioned earlier that Flavor West would be a filling. This is even more of a, of, a, of a strawberry filling flavor. And I'd like it with a cookie or on top of a cake or something like that. I think that it, it might be decent as the, <clears throat> as the icing on top of a cinnamon roll. Maybe something like that. Very interesting. That's a, I like that one. Now moving on to the flavor art, and I would, I don't, I'd expect flavor art to do this fairly well. Um, it's just the sort of flavor I think that flavor art's gonna, gonna be able to hit. Again, at 22. Um, very minor. Uh, not a lot going on there at all, actually. Um, I would say that's mostly EM, actually, uh, ethamaltol. There's a little bit of a, of a flavor there. Um, much lighter, I would say lighter even than the Capella. It's almost too weak to overcome the coffee that I used as a palate cleanser. Um, but very little going on there, very... Yeah, I'm not getting much at all from this. I'm not going to say I'm disappointed because Flavor Art may be looking for that very thing. Uh, much like, you know, cotton candy is with TPA. This is uh, TFA. This, is, this, this might be just Capella's um, very light sweetener smoother. There's, I think there's some vanilla there. Very, very, very light. Very light vanilla. Okay, moving on. Okay, I've uh, moved on to TFA now. Not the TFA toasted, but TFA marshmallow. And um, given my experience with TFA, I'm expecting vanilla here. I'm expecting to, to really sense the vanilla. So let's see. Yeah, not disappointed at all. Um, the vanilla is definitely there. Not quite as strong as I was expecting, but um, definitely predominantly vanilla flavoring. Um, yeah, I think that's a that's a good all-around useful. Uh, 
flavor? Let's see, I'm actually curious. If I go to, I'm gonna come back over here to uh, flavors. And do my search for marshmallow again. And gives us, yeah, TPA is by far the most popular marshmallow used, and I can see why. It, um, it's not going to overpower a mix, it's not going to... It's not going to add any off flavors. It's going to give you a little bit of vanilla-y, you know, creamy, marshmallow-y, just sort of softening the flavor. I'd say definitely ethamaltol or maltol in this. Yeah, if you're looking for something just to smooth out a flavor, that's that's the one I'd probably pick. And um, it looks like uh, people agree. Okay, uh, toasted marshmallow up next. I've got uh, toasted marshmallow loaded up now. Not quite sure what to expect here. This is TPA toasted marshmallow. Um, again, a popular flavor. Uh, 400 or so recipes use it. And... I don't know, maybe I'm expecting a little caramel, maybe a little nuttiness. Uh, I still want that 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 softness, that EM-ish out of it. Maybe I'm not expecting much vanilla out of this, let's see. The vanilla's there. Um, that caramel note is there, a little bitterness coming with it, which you'd expect from toasting. Actually, a stronger vanilla note, I would say. Stronger than the TFA. I like this. This is this is complex. Um, I'm not sure what I would use it in exactly. Um, but yeah, that toastiness is coming in. This is, uh, this is... It's a very good replication of what you'd get if you put a marshmallow over a campfire. Yeah, um, a little chocolate, and that 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 might be s'more all by itself. Um, you'd need a little cinnamon for the graham cracker. As I get closer to the to the quad, to, to running out. So um, getting a little bit of a dry hit there. The toasting really comes out on it. So maybe at a higher temperature, this would even be better. Yeah, that's good. Um, definitely gonna change a mix. You're gonna feel that, uh, the impact of that in a mix if you use it. In general, pretty good though. Um, Alright, so what I'm probably going to do is put these in a dark place. Let them age a little bit. Try it again in a week. I think I'm also going to do, um, a year ago I put up a Marshmallow Mike recipe. And I think that I'll make that again and make all of these with that Marshmallow Mike. It was strawberry ripe, graham cracker, and a marshmallow. And I'll probably do each one of these in that recipe as well and uh, test those too. And um, great, uh, I hope you learned something today. We'll do another one of these soon. I think I'm gonna do some, uh, some random mixes in the future. So we'll see if we can just take something right on the spot and turn it into something that's good. Talk to you later. Thanks for watching. Um, like and subscribe, I think that's the right thing to say. See you in the future.